Morning, everyone. I'm joined today, today by Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights, Kristen Clark, and U.S. Attorney for the Middle District of Florida, Roger Hanberg. We are here today to announce a major development in the Justice Department's anti-redlining initiative, which was made possible by the hard work of the staffs of both of their offices. But first, I would like to address those who are living with understandable fear in the wake of Hamas's terrorist attacks on Israel. As the FBI has noted, we are seeing an increase in reported threats against faith communities, particularly Jewish, Muslim, and Arab communities and institutions. Last week, I directed all 94 of our United States Attorney's offices and the FBI to be in close touch with federal, state, and local law enforcement partners in their districts. Yesterday, I met with, and today and tomorrow, I will continue to meet with our U.S. attorneys and federal, state, and local law enforcement officials here in Florida. I have also directed our U.S. attorneys to reach out to religious and other community leaders in their districts to reaffirm our commitment to them and to assess what additional support they may need. The entire Justice Department remains vigilant in our efforts to identify and respond to hate crimes, threats of violence, or related incidents with particular attention to threats to faith communities. And as always, the Justice Department remains focused on doing everything we can to keep Americans safe from the threat of terrorism. We are here today to announce Ameris Bank's agreement to enter into, enter into a consent decree regarding our allegations that the bank engaged in redlining in violation of the Fair Housing Act and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Redlining occurs when lenders deny or discourage applications or avoid providing loans in neighborhoods because of the race, color, or national origin of the people who live in those neighborhoods. Our complaint alleges that the bank denied or discouraged home loan applications and other credit opportunities and services in major black and Hispanic neighborhoods here in Jacksonville. As a result of our investigation, we have reached a settlement agreement with Ameris. If approved by the court, the bank would pay $9 million to expand access to credit opportunities for residents of black and Hispanic neighborhoods in Jacksonville. This investigation is part of the Justice Department's Combating Redlining Initiative, which I launched two years ago this month. Once this agreement is approved, the initiative will have secured in total more than $100 million for communities across the country that have been far harmed by discriminatory lending practices. Our complaint alleges that the bank located its branches in specific areas of Jacksonville to serve majority white neighborhoods and to avoid serving black and Hispanic neighborhoods. This included failing to open even a single branch in majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods in Jacksonville, despite having opened 18 full service branches in other parts of Jacksonville. For example, we allege that in 2019, Ameris closed two of its Jacksonville branches as part of its so-called efficiency initiative. Ameris had identified both of those branches as having, quote, minority populations, quote, higher than nearby branch locations. One of those branches, which was located within what Ameris called the, quote, urban core of Jacksonville, was the closest branch to most of the city's majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods. That branch was, was closed despite the fact that Ameris itself ra rated it as one of the, quote, best financial performers of all of its branches across the United States. Ameris did not close any branches in the majority white areas of Jacksonville as part of this so-called efficiency initiative. In another example, we allege that in 2020, Ameris sent out a, quote, free checking mailer that the bank said was targeted to low and moderate income areas in majority minority neighborhoods. Ameris mailed out over 22,000 postcards with images of white models to 13 zip codes in Jacksonville. 
Not one postcard was sent to a single resident in a majority black and Hispanic neighborhood. Between 2016 and 2021, other lending institutions comparable to Maris generated loan applications from residents of majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods at over three time, times the rate generated by Ameris. The majority of the $9 million in relief that Ameris will pay under the consent order will be in the form of loan subsidy funds. These funds can be used by residents for down payments, to lower their interest rates, or to make home improvements that will increase the value of their homes. In addition, the settlement requires Ameris to open or acquire its first full-service branch located in a majority black and Hispanic neighborhood in Jacksonville. That branch will be located on the St. Johns River in a retail-oriented, visible location. In a few minutes, Assistant Attorney General Clark and U.S. Attorney Hanberg will, pro will provide additional information regarding the Ameris settlement. Discrimination in lending has its roots in a nearly century-old government program that denied black Americans access to credit services to obtain home ownership. But as today's redlining case makes clear, redlining is not just a relic of the past. Indeed, some of the neighborhoods that we allege Ameris redlined are some of the same neighborhoods that federal agencies originally redlined in the 1930s. Moreover, the harm of redlining is not felt only by individuals and communities that are redlined today, but also by the next generation and the next. Redlining makes it difficult for people of color to accumulate wealth through the purchase, refinancing, or repair of their homes. This has contributed to, and it continues to deepen, the persistent wealth gap in our country. This kind of discrimination in lending violates federal law, and it is contrary to the promise of equal access to opportunity upon which both our economy and our democracy depend. That is why two years ago, I announced that the Justice Department would launch the redlining initiative that I mentioned before. This initiative has brought together the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division and our other U.S. Attorney's offices with bank regulatory agencies and state attorneys general. Over the past 24 months, we have reached a total of 10 settlements with lending institutions to resolve allegations of redlining. And as I said at the outset, subject to court approval of the Ameris settlement, the Justice Department will have secured more than $100 million for communities across the country that have been harmed by discriminatory practices. In each of these cases, we reached resolutions that involve lenders making significant financial investments to remedy their alleged discrimination. In addition to monetary restitution, our redlining settlements also require lenders to adopt meaningful changes to their business practices to promote fair lending. As just ex one example of what these resolutions look like in practice, in 2021, the Department obtained a settlement with Cadence Bank. One person who got a subsidy as a result of the settlement was a single mother of an 11-year-old daughter who previously lived in rental housing. With the help of the subsidy, the mother was able to purchase a home with a yard in a safe neighborhood that is walking distance to her daughter's school. But not only has her quality of life improved, but she is also paying less per month on her mortgage than she was paying for her rent. I am proud of the Justice Department's work being done to combat redlining and to secure relief for the communities that have been harmed. And I am grateful to our partners across the government for, our assist for their assistance in these efforts. I see the work that we have begun over the last two years as just the beginning. The Justice Department currently has over two dozen active investigations into redlining across the country. Redlining is off, off, is harmful, it is unlawful, and it is wrong. Lending discrimination 
has no place in our country. The Justice Department will continue to combat the redlining that harms families and neighborhoods for generations, and we will continue to pursue justice on their behalf. I'm now pleased to turn over the podium to the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights. Thank you, Attorney General Garland. I am proud to join you and U.S. Attorney Roger Handberg for the Middle District of Florida today to mark this significant and unprecedented achievement in the Justice Department's Combating Redlining Initiative. Today, the Justice Department filed a complaint and a proposed consent decree that, once approved by the court, requires Ameris Bank to pay $9 million to resolve our, our allegations that the bank redlined majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods here in Jacksonville, Florida. Ameris is a bank with nearly $25 billion in assets that operates in nine states across the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. Specifically, our complaint alleges that Ameris violated the Fair Housing Act and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, two federal civil rights laws that prohibit discrimination in lending. Our analysis found that from 2016 through 2021, Ameris failed to provide mortgage lending services to majority black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville. Among other things, we found that in one-third of all majority black and Hispanic tracts in Jacksonville, Ameris did not obtain a single application over the entire six-year period, but peer lenders did receive applications in these areas. We also allege that Ameris has never operated a branch in a black and Hispanic neighborhood in Jacksonville, even though majority black and Hispanic census tracts account for nearly 20% of the bank's service area. Exhibit C in our complaint shows Ameris's 18 branches in Jacksonville, and the green dots depict each mortgage loan application that Ameris received from 2016 through 2021. As you see, the green dots show a majority of applications were from majority white neighborhoods south of the St. Johns River. In contrast, there is a significant lack of applications from the majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods shown in the red and orange shaded area, particularly downtown where over 80% of residents are black or Hispanic. Our statistical analysis revealed that Ameris' peer lending institutions were receiving applications in majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods at three times the rate of Ameris. Our analysis also found that Ameris did not make sufficient, ever sufficient efforts to reach neighborhoods of color. In fact, mortgage bankers failed to serve those communities, and marketing and outreach efforts were directed towards white communities. And finally, we allege that Ameris knew of its redlining risk in black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville for years, but it did not take any corrective action to address the risk and reach out to communities of color in Jacksonville. As Attorney General Garland explained, there is a direct connection between historic redlining and modern-day redlining that highlights the devastating effects of race discrimination that becomes entrenched in a community and can reverberate across generations. Redlining has a significant impact on the health and wealth of these communities. Home ownership has been one of the most effective ways that Americans have built wealth in our country. And when families can't access credit to achieve home ownership, they lose an opportunity to share in this country's prosperity. The gaps in home ownership rates contribute to staggering gaps in family wealth. The median wealth of a black family is $45,000 and a Hispanic family, 
$262,000 compared to $285,000 for a white family. A 2023 study by the National Association of Realtors indicates significant homeownership gaps across the state of Florida. The study found that while 75% of white Floridians own their homes, only 55% of Hispanic Floridians own a home, and only 49% of black Floridians own a home. These numbers are a product of systemic deprivation of credit and wealth building opportunities. And this is why we are committed to confronting redlining. The resolution that we have secured here will provide the strong remedies necessary to promote racial justice and equity to underserved communities of color in Jacksonville. And I want to highlight one critical component. Under this agreement, Emeritus will provide a $7.5 million loan subsidy fund to help borrowers in Jacksonville who live in underserved communities access home loans. This is transformative relief that will unlock the door to home ownership and intergenerational wealth for residents of communities of color here in Jacksonville. It's important that we're making this announcement here in the city of Jacksonville, a city that has a long history of civil rights advocacy. It was the home of James Weldon Johnson, the renowned and accomplished civil rights activist, prolific writer, and former leader of the NAACP. It was also the site of civil rights protests dating all the way back to the early 20th century, where residents boldly organized and participated in protests and boycotts of the city's segregated streetcar system. Decades later, in the 1960s, black protesters participated in lunch counter sit-ins, even at the risk of physical violence and abuse, including the infamous Axe Handle Saturday attack. I hope that this announcement builds on that proud tradition and fuels ongoing efforts to ensure full equity for all. We're sending a message today. Banks and mortgage companies need not wait for the Justice Department to come knocking at its door. We encourage financial institutions to proactively assess their redlining risk and immediately take corrective action to reach underserved communities in their market areas. We will not stand idly by while financial institutions avoid communities of color in their markets or erect barriers that make it harder for residents in underserved communities to receive lending opportunities. These communities have waited far too long for equal credit opportunity, and they are entitled to equal access to credit that the law demands now. Combating redlining is one of the most important strategies for ensuring equal opportunity today. By taking on the discriminatory lending practices of banks and mortgage companies, we're helping to ensure that more black, Hispanic, and other communities of color are able to buy a home, generate wealth, and fulfill the American dream. This settlement marks a new pinnacle in our efforts to bring an end to redlining and provides tangible relief to communities that have been starved of access to credit for far too long. I want to thank colleagues in the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department and here in the Middle District of Florida for their work and efforts. I also want to thank the City Teen Center for hosting us this morning. I'll now turn the floor over to U.S. Attorney Hanberg to provide more information about our resolution with Ameris. Thank you, Attorney General Garland and Assistant Attorney General Clark for your remarks as well as for being here today to announce this resolution with Ameris Bank. Attorney General Garland, your Combating Red Line initiative represents the department's most effective and coordinated effort to address redlining and has resulted in the department through the Civil Rights Division and my office here in the Middle District of Florida, bringing the very first redlining case in the history of the state of Florida. I would also like to thank our partners in the Civil Rights Division's Housing and Civil Enforcement Section. 
Deputy Chief Lucy Carlson, and Trial Attorney Jenna Radin. Your work, along with Assistant United States Attorneys Johanse Pettis and Michael Kenneth, has resulted in an impactful resolution that is going to help majority black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville for years to come. As Assistant Attorney General Clark has announced, the proposed consent order filed today secured a $9 million settlement with Ameris Bank. I want to take a few minutes to explain what this will mean for majority black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville once the settlement is approved by the court. The $9 million in monetary relief is divided into three parts. First, as you heard, Ameris Bank is going to invest $7.5 million in a loan subsidy fund. This fund will subsidize home mortgage loans, home improvement loans, and home refinance loans in majority black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville. Ameris Bank will offer qualified applicants numerous forms of assistance, including offering an interest rate below the prevailing market rate, direct down payment assistance, direct closing cost assistance, and payment of the initial mortgage insurance premium where applicable. Second, Ameris will spend at least $600,000 on partnerships with one or more community-based organizations to provide residents of majority black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville with services related to credit, financial education, home ownership, and foreclosure prevention. And third, Ameris Bank will devote at least $900,000 on advertising, outreach, and consumer financial education targeted to residents of majority black and Hispanic communities in Jacksonville. Ameris Bank will provide the community with outreach programs to inform real estate brokers, real estate agents, and developers with information about its products and services. And Ameris Bank will develop a consumer financial education program to provide training and counseling services about consumer finance and credit establishment to individuals in majority black and Hispanic communities here in Jacksonville. The proposed consent order also will require Ameris Bank to adopt policies, practices, and procedures to ensure its compliance with its fair lending obligations. Ameris Bank will hire a qualified third-party consultant to conduct an independent review of its fair lending program in majority black and Hispanic neighborhoods across all of its markets. Ameris Bank will employ a full-time director of community lending to oversee the development of its lending in black and Hispanic neighborhoods in Jacksonville. And the bank will ensure that at least three mortgage loan officers are dedicated to serving majority black and Hispanic communities here in Jacksonville. Finally and importantly, subject to regulatory approval, Ameris Bank will open or acquire one full service branch located in a majority black and Hispanic sentence tract located north of the St. John's River in Jacksonville. As you can see from some of the terms of this settlement, the resolution reached is designed to have a lasting impact on communities of color in Jacksonville. The allegations brought in this case are significant and the message is clear. Modern day redlining will not be tolerated in the Middle District of Florida. I want to acknowledge Ameris Bank for its cooperation during this investigation and its agreement to resolve this matter. My office will work with them to ensure that the terms of the consent order are met to the fullest. We will be with them every step of the way to ensure that this relief reaches the communities of color here in Jacksonville. Thank you, and I'll now turn the podium back to the Attorney General. general matter with respect to the wealth gap, you know, on a very significant 
part of the way people build wealth in this country is through home ownership, through repair of the homes, through improvements of the homes. If you can't have home ownership, you lose a major asset that everybody else in the country uses to build wealth. And I, I'm going to let Roger talk specifically about Jacksonville. Uh, it's going to have a, a great impact here in Jacksonville. And so one of the things that we have done in this settlement to try to give um, meaningful relief to as many people as possible is we have a $20,000 cap on the subsidy. Uh, and that's in time, and we specifically chose that amount to pick something that would have a meaningful benefit to the people here in Jacksonville, but that would allow for as many people as possible to take advantage of the benefits for this settlement. Thank you. Well, on A's, NBC News, uh, this time I might ask you one on topic as well as something on the top of your remarks. Uh, to start off with, uh, what is the sort of timeline that we're looking at for the settlement? Um, and when will those loan subsidies be made available uh, in your estimation? And then additionally, uh, to the top of your remarks and those threats that you acknowledge, uh, is it accurate that at this time, based on what you're seeing, uh, that there are no specific plots that you're monitoring at this time, just more of a general type of threat environment? I'll take that question first, and I'll let Roger answer the specific ones. As I said, and as all of you have seen, there are, has been a significant increase in reported threats all across the country. And um, I'm meeting, uh, I met yesterday uh, with law enforcement. I'll be meeting today uh, and the following day with law enforcement across uh, Florida, um, both state, local, and, and all three, state, local, and federal. Uh, to be sure that we are adequately prepared to meet all those threats. Now, let me let Roger answer the specific uh, question. Well, the, the first step in terms of when the subsidies will come out is the approval uh, of the proposed order. So we filed the complaint this morning with the proposed order, and so nothing will happen until the judge reviews that and has an opportunity to enter it. Uh, and then there's specific timelines that are set out there, and one of the things my office is going to do on a moving forward basis is uh, we're going to advise the community as to when those funds are going to become available. And one of the things the settlement does is it also puts the obligation on Ameris Bank uh, to advertise it and to let people know about it. So there will be more information uh, coming. Thank you. So as I said, this is a na nationwide combating redlining initiative. We've already had, I think, 10, is that right, um, uh, um, consent orders entered against other banks. I think we have another 20 or so uh, pending open investigations. So this is not just a, a Jacksonville problem, not just an Ameris problem. We are looking all over the country with that respect. Um, well, as the Attorney General has trained us very well, we don't talk about uh, pending investigations. Um, and, and I would imagine uh, if we get to that point, it's going to happen very similar to what happened in this case, which is um, one of the things we're going to do with these redlining cases is when we do have them and when they are sustained, we will let uh, the community know about them. But I, I can't comment on anything else at this time. And um, as the Attorney General noted, we are fighting redlining across the country. We have secured settlements from coast to coast, including against banks in Los Angeles, Houston, Memphis, Philadelphia, Newark, Columbus, Ohio, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, and now today here in Jacksonville.